Hey guys, it's Sidi Kupantoa, and today I'd like to talk about how I approach backgrounds for my animation projects. Now, this video isn't a painting or drawing tutorial, it's more about a general approach on how I go about backgrounds for my animation projects. Now, animation is a vast medium with different styles and art direction, therefore the types of backgrounds you can get from an animated project can also vary. Some are graphic and some are painterly, some are realistic. Some are detailed, some are cartoony, some are minimal, or almost non-existent. However, the overall pipeline and process of backgrounds to animation and the whole compositing, it's still more or less relatively the same. Maybe I'll do a video on digital painting and color someday, or even perspective. But those are whole other topics of its own. In 2D animation, the use of layers is significant, especially when it comes to putting the characters together with the backgrounds, other characters, effects, everything. There's a lot of different levels. However, even backgrounds can have multiple layers, which is usually to give the impression of depth. With some of those layers being foreground elements, these are layers that are on top of the characters and much closer to the camera, or with the audience point of view, and background elements much further away. This could be behind the character animation layer. Now again, this is also important for things like camera moves. Things further in the background drift or move exponentially slower than the layers closer to the camera. The same thing applies when you're doing things like camera truck ins and outs. Things closer to the camera shrink and enlarge exponentially compared to the image further in the back. These are all used to give the illusion of depth, and it's also sometimes known as a parallax effect. The higher the contrast these images and planes move, the bigger the space feels. This is important to think about when constructing our backgrounds and later compositing them with our animated characters and effects. Now, another thing that I think about is coming up with a process that another artist on the team can easily replicate. This is an advice that I got from a handful of background painters for animated shows. So an example of this would be to use specific layers for light, shadow, and textures respectfully, making it easier for different artists to replicate on the team. You could set these layer blend modes to overlay, multiply, screen, or dodge just so that it's easier to recreate shadows and light, and change them when it's needed. Kind of like if you're dealing with the same background or set and you just have to change the time of day, the lighting situation, to fit according with the story. Also, organized layers are key when tracking layers or changes when needed. When I construct the background for my animated project, I usually have an idea of what my foreground elements are or what my background elements are, especially when I've already storyboarded the scene. I try to implement a bit of information, especially when it comes to camera moves and backgrounds, so I know that it's there and it's something that I have to think about when I'm painting the backgrounds and animating the characters. Now, some people ask, do I do the backgrounds before the animation or do I do the animation first and then the backgrounds? So I usually do the storyboards first and then construct a very loose layout with perspective grid lines and perspective off of that storyboard just so that I know where the set is and the ground and any important basic information. And when I talk about how simple do I go, well, it's really just a horizon line, making sure that I have that and determining whether it's a one point, two point or three point perspective, because this is going to affect the form and perspective of my character animation. Or you could be working in a style that doesn't really require any perspective. It's really just flat. The advice that I would give is giving the bare bones of what an animator can work off of. However, another project that I've been working on uses 3D backgrounds. I quickly constructed a 3D set using Blender just so that I have a basic layout, some lighting information, some textures. Then I'll just use this as layout and animate my characters on top of it. Then I grab a frame from that shot and place it in the program where I'm going to paint my backgrounds. It definitely helps making sure you have your character animation in that frame of reference just so that you know which parts of the backgrounds do show in the final shot and what are hidden because of the character. Then I would just draw a very rough and loose sketch with a little more description of what is actually in the background. So this is where I determine the materials or the specificness of the backgrounds. Because what I originally had was just a placeholder. Now I'm just doing the set dressing. And then after I do a rough sketch, then I move on to another layer where I start cleaning up the lines, making things a lot more specific and I guess clear. Now, some productions do use line art for their final look, some don't, some do have a clean and lineless approach to having backgrounds, but I would say have at least a rough sketch with the set dressing just so that you know how to describe the background. 
Now, I'm not going to do a whole discussion about painting and colors and all that. I'm just going to talk about a very quick and watered down process when I do paint my backgrounds. So I start painting in my neutral colors. This means implementing colors without being affected by light and shadow. Usually I'm choosing colors around the mid range values, but hey, desired colors have different values too. Some colors in the color wheel may appear brighter or darker in the value scale. As for lighting and shadows, I do them in separate layers like I was talking about earlier, and I utilize blend modes. So an example of this is for shadows and shade, I use a multiply layer as a blend mode just to paint the shadows in. The multiply blend mode is a popular choice for shadows, but you can use other things like hard light overlays and things like that. I usually determine whether I want cool colors or warm colors for the shadow. And it really depends on the context of the background, like if it's a relatively warm scene or if there's a blue sky around. I'll make a separate layer for the lights, so I usually choose screen as a blend mode or even linear dodge or add. Sometimes even lighten. Again, it really depends. You can choose whatever blend mode you want. Sometimes if I want the light to sort of spread and to give sort of that slight ambient inclusion, I'll duplicate the light layer and I'll blur it just so that it feels like the light is being spread all around. But again, it really depends on the art direction that you're going for. Sometimes a more graphic or sketchy art direction might not be suitable for something like this. All right, so once I'm done painting my backgrounds or making my backgrounds, I'm ready to prepare them for the animation compositing stage. And again, compositing is the stage where I put the characters and the backgrounds and the effects and other post filtering effects together. However, my raw background files have a lot of layers due to the many changes, paint overs, and adjustments I had to make. So my plan is to prepare a version where there's only a few layers resembling each layer or element. So for example, one aspect of the background has a pot of plants. I'll just merge the lines, colors, lights, and shadows of that foreground element or that plant into one single layer. And I'll do the same thing with the rest of the background. And you know, maybe there's just so many layers, especially in elements that's really far away from the audience. And I usually just merge them all together in a single layer, unless the camera is actually drifting in and out of that shot, then that's something that I'll have to think about and making more layers. But I try to keep it simple. Less layers equals less complexity, especially if the shot only lasts for a few seconds. Now, when I'm making my backgrounds, it's always important to think about compositing, knowing that there's gonna be layers moving in and around. And I think once you have experience in compositing, it kind of gives you a clear idea of how to organize your backgrounds. So for example, I have a shot where there's just this huge cloud, you know, drifting, it's a huge wide pan. So I'll just make a layer that's a huge, big ass pan of a cloud. So when I do bring it in my compositing program, I already know how to animate that big giant cloud drifting from stage left to stage right, for example. I'll also make separate layers for light blooms or lens flares or things like that, especially if I want the light and characters to interact with each other, like volumetric lighting effects or blend modes, etc. As many of you know, I use After Effects as my choice for compositing. It's because I've used it for many years, but I think it's time to also look into other compositing software. So because I use After Effects in Photoshop, both Adobe products part of the Adobe Cloud, they have their own ecosystem and they kind of interact with each other's file formats. Many years ago, I would just have to export each layer as their own PNG, TIFF, or any other transparent image file. Now I can just import the PSD files with the layered elements and it just imports them as layers in After Effects. What's cool about this is that if I want to make last minute changes, I can, you know, open up Photoshop, I can make the changes on a separate window, and then when I go back to the compositing window, After Effects automatically updates that because it's working directly with the PSD file. Now, when I add the backgrounds all together with the backgrounds, I have to make sure that the backgrounds don't become too distracting. And this could be that there's just too much information in the background or other things that clutters the background. This is also affected by values and tones sort of clashing with the character animation, one being sharper than the other. Now, there are many ways you can go about this. You can blur the background a bit just so the focus is on the characters. It could also fake the depth of field. 
You could even brighten or darken the background with post effects so you have some lights versus darks with the characters and the backgrounds. When I'm dealing with a scene that has a lot of effects and filters and to add a bit of atmosphere, I'll add a bit of like blending gradients just to give a bit of that atmosphere or I'll import some stock footage of dust and smoke that's transparent and just to give the scene a lot more of that atmosphere. When it comes to animating background elements, I tend to keep things simple. I don't try to animate every single layer because sometimes it just doesn't need it. In After Effects, I tend to group things together. So for example, a character can be parented to a background element. So when I move that background, the character sticks to it. So if a character is like standing on the ground, I'll just parent it to a ground and only animate the ground if I want to give that without having to animate the character layer. And then I can parent that ground to a big overall background layer so when I move that background, everything moves. And this is useful for things like camera moves, camera shakes, camera tilts, and things like that. But if I just don't want to animate backgrounds, I can use a null object in After Effects. So what it is, is an object where you can't see it, there's nothing there, it's just there as reference. So I can parent all my layers to a null object and then apply animation on that null object and everything else that's parented to that null object will be affected. This saves time for me as I don't need to apply specific keyframes to each layer or try to match layers together. You can get away with parenting objects together and I can easily remove the parenting properties of a layer in case it's not working or if I need to make more changes. But some programs will allow you to, you know, make each layer a 3D layer. So it actually moves in 3D space and there's a camera that you can move around. You can do this too. It'll just make things a lot more complex and you really have to think about the space, the actual space, instead of cheating it with just 2D movement. But I avoid that because you can get away with a lot just by using 2D movement tricks. Also, as time goes by, I've become more interested in limited animation and smarter solutions. I don't want to make things more complex just for the sake of complexity. Sometimes I'll just use one image for the background and I'll use distorting effects and my compositing software like lenses or warping just to give the illusion of 3D, just to fake that illusion of depth. So that's my general rundown of how I approach backgrounds. It starts with a storyboard and using that storyboard, I'll create a really rudimentary layout with perspective lines, with some notes here and there, just to keep the character grounded. And then using that along with the animation, I'll paint an actual background on top of it. And if the background has some, you know, foreground, background or parallax things going on, I'll separate them into layers. I keep the layer count relatively small just so that it's not so complex and just so that my PC doesn't bust its ass. And then I'll import everything into a compositing program with the characters, effects, making sure everything works well and dandy together. I can talk more about painting or drawing backgrounds, perspective, I can even talk about camera tricks, parallax, and more compositing stuff. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.